Hello and welcome in to another episode of Farm to Fame. I am Kelsey Wingert. That is Jack Sparrow and that is our captain. Oh, our captain, Maddie Mass, Fairly Odd Parents. Not sure which uh, character. Um, I'm not dressed up because I just jumped off an aeroplane, but Pete was ready for Halloween. Oh, well, I didn't know that we were getting dressed up. This is just what I decided to put on today. Well, I mean, are you going trick-or-treating with Leilani or something later, or did you just dress up because you're... We're having people come to the house at some point. There's going to be a couple of knocks on the door, so I wanted to be ready. And yeah. it's uh, it's a little later in the afternoon than, than normal, so I have to jump straight from here into character. So yeah. <laughs> you, you've already no, jumped into it, I think. There was no time... <laughs> For me to be able to throw all this. This didn't take seven minutes, by the way, to put this together. There's layers upon layers upon layers. Even the belts have layers. There's so many layers to this thing. So <laughs> yeah. shout out to Disney for the uh, pretty sick costume, I'll be honest. Yeah, Disney. Um, I have a Chicago White Sox bat. I want to shout out my friend Audra Martin, who's the sideline reporter for the Twins. As you guys may or may not know, I collect these 18-inch mini bats from every have major league that. stadium that i go to and i have been to guaranteed rate field twice you the the reason i collect these mini bats is because you can only get these louisville slugger mini bats at the stadium you cannot uh, buy them online you can you might be able to nice. find one team on ebay if somebody's selling it but it's just cool because you can only get them at the ballpark both times I have been to Guaranteed Rate Field, I have forgotten to get my mini bat, which means I could not get another White Sox mini bat until I went back. Audra Martin was there with the twins for the final, one of the final series of the season, and she bought me one and mailed it to me. Very nice. What a part. wonderful, wonderful yep. expression of generosity. Yep. Um, it's Halloween. Is it? Uh, game three of the freaking World Series tonight. That's what I want to talk about. Game one was one of the greatest, one of the greatest baseball games I've watched in recent, and I've lost, watched a lot of baseball. Just um, a couple of games. One of the one of the greatest games I think I've seen by the time this episode comes out, Pete and Maddie. Um, game three and game four will have been played. We will mm -hmm. be waiting on game five in Philly. Yep. Uh, before we dive into what we've seen in those first two games, what do we think is going to happen in Philly? I have a, uh, look, my my guess at the start of this whole thing was Philly's in five. It was a bit of a, like a, uh, they've really got to play everything perfectly, but I'd love to see it happen more of a statement rather than anything else. They won game one, shocked everybody, down five, come back, great. Tonight, I think it's going to be more of the same. That atmosphere is going to be, absolutely Finning. off its face I, so I, I think i've said it before but i don't i can't imagine what philadelphia is going to be like when i saw the highlights of them singing uh hmm. what's he at live whatever what that song was <laughs> like it's, um, that's what's just the song wait what's the song I'm in the corner no. watching, watching you kiss, kiss we can't, we can't sing and licensing duck and keep... uh -oh. so well, not really a banger song, but they turn it in. That's the so kind of moments random. that World Series can give you. Right? Like that's what we're. That's the like. That's the song. That's but the one that me the that city of Philadelphia chose to go with. The city of Atlanta was wearing pearl necklaces for the entirety of the playoffs last year. Grown men, pearl necklaces, rednecks. I think there's better songs. There are, but when they all get it going, you can feel that that song has meaning to that group. Yeah, there's a uh, there was a moment that happened throughout this year where that song had relevance to a situation for that club. That's not just them going, oh, let's just play a song and sing to it. That song has been with them all year. Maybe this is what I'm just maybe I'm just pulling this out of my ass, but we'll have to get Trev to text Gibbo to find out the true story. There has to be a, a reporter had to have already asked about that. Maybe they're not giving. While I try to look that up. As I've been watching the streams, Peter, it kind of seems like like you were all in rooting for the Phillies to win this one, which I know you picked them 
but it just kind of surprises me with them being an NL East opponent, but just based off your reactions, it seems like you get way more excited when the Phillies do something good compared to when the Astros do something good. And that honestly is just because I'm the underdog guy. I don't, I love good stories and I love good storylines. And I was a guy that spent my whole career justifying the clubhouse guy. I wanted to pass down that role for generations past me. So, and that guy's getting kicked out a little bit of the game. We want, we want a guy that throws 97, not a guy that can underarm it and make jokes. There's going to be a spot for the guy I that underarms it. I love the guy who jokes. underarms it and makes right? jokes. You wouldn't have met him had there been, I don't know if he would have had a career today, Kels, I'll be honest with you. Okay. I found the base of the song. The song has become an anthem of sorts for the streaking Phillies, and it came from 2022 newcomer Kyle Schwarber, who brought it with him from the 2021 Red Sox. Indeed, the Red Sox became known for belting the song during their celebrations in last year's run, which was cut short in the ALCS by the Astros. I don't even hear it from them. So that's how well they did and or how public. There's a, definitely a, I'm watching a video of them in the clubhouse right now. I don't like that. So they just they took it from another team who lost to the team that they are playing in the World Series. I'm out on that being the reason. That's terrible. That means that That's so I, I think if I think if enough fa- Philly fans knew that they would not be singing the song anymore. That's very, very weird. Isn't that they, the Red Sox lost to the team that they're playing against? And you, why would you take it from another? Just so why up. haven't we heard anything on Twitter about Red Sox fans saying, "Oh, it was just something we like"? I feel like, like when, when I think Red Sox uh, fans just yeah, I don't know Steve, if they're watching Maddie, anymore. Maddie, he's been waiting for that. <laughs> he's been huh. waiting for that stab for a long time. I'm trying to read another article to to co- collab- corroborate. Collaborate. Collaborate. Is it no? I, don't, I think it's corrob- corroborate. I think there's a B in there. Oh, you can corroborate a story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, definitely. Or collaborate depends on where you're at. Collaborate and listen. What? Why? This okay. is what I'm saying. Is this just one article? Because I feel like with the Contreras thing, as soon as Contreras came out to the trumpet song, every single Mets fan in the world was like, "Oh, we've already done that." Now we don't hear any Red Sox fans saying we've already done that. The, another article. This legitimately came the year after the Red Sox catcher Kevin Ploiecki. Is that how you say that? Ploiecki. Ploiecki developed an obsession for the Tiesto remix of Callan Scott's cover. The team started singing it regularly. Um, in 2022, the outfielder Kyle Schwarber removed from the Red Sox to the Phillies and obviously brought with him the passion for the song. After this long journey, dancing on my own became the anthem that accompanies the Philadelphia Phillies team to the World Series. Interesting. Out on that. Peter, be careful. I know. I know. Okay. So tonight, game three. Yeah. Lance McCullers versus Noah Syndergaard. Advantage, what? advantage Astros, if yeah. I'm going to be honest. What is Noah Syndergaard? And what's fun about this is people are going to know what he's capable of when this episode comes out. What is Noah Syndergaard capable of tonight? I'll give you my honest opinion. Okay. Okay. Uh, he has had to re-tool uh, himself since he first came into the league. Like a lot of guys have to do, they have to adapt with their stuff. Yeah. He threw a couple of sinkers the last time I saw him pitch that were kind of disgusting. Uh, so it was in Philly. I think they can probably expect three or four innings out of him. Okay. Depending on what they've said for him to do if they say hey just give us whatever you have for as long as you have then it could be whatever but if how did those conversations go that's well it'd be a decision i think it would no matter what they'd probably say give us whatever you got for as long as you got i don't think they'd try and give him a pace him speech but in the back of their mind they're probably thinking well we'd like to get two out of him maybe three yeah so but he could get on a roll he could get on a roll where he's 18 pitches in and they're through two innings and they're like, well, look, they haven't even looked very good. Let's send him back out there. That can also be a trap, but this could be them deciding to re-bolster their bullpen or they just had an off day. There's so many things that go into the decision-making of tonight's game. So he has, he made. He threw against the Braves at the end of the season and looked pretty decent. What was that game? 
17 plus five is 22, 22. So he made 25 appearances this season. All but one of them were starts. Um, but then you go to, you were asking what he did in the regular season versus the Braves towards the end or in no, the postseason because he made two appearances versus you guys. It might have been the postseason when I saw him pitch. That would have been my last um, one. I mean, he looked pretty yeah. decent. So in the postseason, he's made three appearances, two of them versus Atlanta, one of them out of the bullpen. Ray went um, a hitless inning. Mm-hmm. And another was his second one was the start versus yeah. uh, the Braves. And he went three innings, one hit, one run, one home run. Do you remember who the home run was? Too? I think it might have been Riley or Olsen. Oh, that's a good guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a safe guess. Um, yeah. And then he went one and a third out of the bullpen versus the Padres, two hits, no runs. Um, so, look, he's been decent for them mm-hmm. as an option. Um. Yeah, look, I, I it's if they can get three three innings out of him tonight, that's an absolute win for them. And depending on where the game's at, you you decide to then I yeah then I don't know what comes after that. What I want to look up is so game two, and I know they just had the off day, which and I don't want to dive, I guess, too much into specifics because this game will have been played. I love um, the fact that we can try and predict how it's going to. Let's do that. <laughs> let's throw ourselves. To the fire. I feel like we do that almost every week. We do almost every, but, you know. But it looks like in game three, the only person who would have been unavailable had there not been an off day outside of the starting pitchers, obviously, um, would be Montero for the Astros. He threw 33 pitches, which honestly, he probably, if they really needed him, he probably could have pitched the next day. But it looks like both these bullpens will be fully rested. So if Noah Syndergaard only is able to go three innings, um, you know, the Phillies would likely have all of their guys because none of their guy guys really pitched in game three, although Connor Brogdon has been pretty good in the postseason for them. Um, Was it universal with the shock that Dusty left him in? That last game, as long as he did, to face the hitters Wheeler? that he was facing. No, Montero. What about, what was the question? So you I just mentioned Montero we would have been the only guy yes. that wasn't one available. And two thirds. He was left in the game much longer than anybody that I've ever spoken to about pitching would have left him in the game. Well, I think at that point, Dusty probably just knew that they had the off day. He only threw 33 pitches. So again, like in my mind, I have the number at, at 25 pitches, which apparently doesn't even exist anymore. I don't know where that number came from. I think that's what they do in high school. It's more um, the way the inning was unfolding, though. Like he was he was good, stressful. then a walk, then a walk, then a hit. And I'm like, Presley's warming up in the bullpen. You got one out to get in the eighth. Like now's the, probably the time, but they got out of it. So yeah, and Presley that, that, gave up a run and he didn't. That would have been one of those moments where you're looking at it going, Ooh, if something happens that inning and they don't come back, that's the that's that was the fact that but what they, they when when you look at what we've seen from these first two games so far, and Maddie, I want to bring this in because I haven't heard your beautiful voice enough today. Um what I mean, like when I think of these two games, like I think of I, Nick Castellano's catch, like yeah. it's just is the moment for me where, I mean, that's the moment that I, that I think of these first two games, but what really, um, and Framber's performance, obviously what he go six and a third, sh- one run, shuddy, one run, one he run. Shuddy. He was shuddy. Um, but he went six and a third, four hits, one run, three walks, one nine Ks. Mm-hmm. Um, game one, Aaron Nola, Aaron Nola, he got hit around versus the Padres. And that's got, my he, biggest factor is the comeback. I mean, both, and that's, you know, and I know we reference talking baseball a lot, but but we're a company's company. We like taking in everybody's stuff. Um, and a point that, that was made on there is the Phillies game plan is having your guys, Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler, go four games in the series. Their first two games, those guys have started, both gave up five runs. I mean, they weren't as sharp as as you would hope. And now Other it's was kind Justin of a wild... And uh, Fran mm-hmm. was really the only one that's really kind of done anything. Yeah. And he was cheating. So it's like, how far do you... Are you saying that because of all this stuff? How you? How I... did you feel about the illegal bat? Because I felt like that was skimmed over very quickly. 
and nobody really talked about it and it's like i'm sorry you okay so i think the the thing with the illegal bat is that it was just a it was just a material that's been banned it wasn't like it was a it was the dimensions okay. that were and it was banned for safe for safety not banned for extra pop or anything okay. it was just they broke too much okay. from my understanding so um i'm i don't have a issue with that at all the story checks out like yeah i'm going to try and use albert paul's bat well you can't because he actually has been having those bats so i get it okay um i didn't look into what made it illegal yeah and i haven't either i'm just assuming that's what that's what's it i don't know i don't think they banned any bats for anything other than that in the past 20 years so that's the only reason i say that unless sammy sosa has taken more bp with a corked one i don't think there's been another ban on bats Quartz bats are wild. I went to a museum in Chicago and they were showing like what it looks like on the inside. That's um, the sticky stuff though, that, that's got me, that's got me like he's going to something in the palm of his hand and then he's rubbing it on his hand and then he's rubbing it on the baseball and then he's wiping it off on his shirt on the way to the umpire. So is it something that's sticky but not sticky enough to stay? So when they check, they don't feel it. That's what I think. That's what I think it looks like or is it just nothing? Yeah, I mean, it's been, but, and Peter, you brought this up last episode. Did I? You said you think guys are still finding ways to use sticky stuff mm -hmm. and that you weren't going to say anything more than that, but you were going to start watching closely. Correct. And then immediately <laughs> we start seeing the weird hand stuff and that has Belts. not been confirmed or denied. I will say the bat was illegal. It says it was a model he obtained from Albert Pujols and he used it because he thought it was very similar in size and weight to his own model. The barrel, he said, was slightly bigger. Oh, he no also thought it was a way to honor the baseball legend, of course, retirement to close the season. Da, da, da. Um, can the barrel, I mean, yeah, I would think be, the barrel being bigger would, have, would it, help you. So, yeah, it gives you more target to hit. Yeah. Um, so, but it's going to be heavier too. Uh, the... But the, you know, the crazy thing is you go up and down the bat rack and really, very rarely are two bats the same. I picked two yeah. of those bats up and I'm like, really? You guys play baseball with this? It's crazy. Like one guy will have a really thin handle, mm -hmm. huge barrel. Other guy will look the like he's swinging handle, a tree axe trunk. With There's the, the axe handles. Yeah. So again, I don't think it's that big a deal. And it's not like Malinano has been <laughs> tearing it up. No, but it was just the way that it happened. Like Tom Verducci did the report yeah, and it was like his first report of the game. And it was just so nonchalant. Um, and it, you just can't, you can't reference anything the Astros doing being illegal in the world series nonchalantly. They're trying to break the stigma of, and it's just, it's just like, if it was completely harmless and unintentional, it just sucks for the Astros because this just I'm gave, sure that's what it was. I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure that's what it was. Like, I'm I'm willing to. I keep. I feel like I've said this a lot for about two weeks. But I, I look. What they did was shit. We did it last week. What they did was shit. It's time to move on. They can't just be tarnished with the same brush every time. Yeah, but like stuff like this can't happen when you're trying to break that stigma. Like but you, you can't... wouldn't be focused on it on another team. Like yeah. But I mean, they did that to themselves. Now what they have to do is break that stigma. But then you have your pitcher rubbing his hands funny. You have, I mean, the barrel of the bat was bigger than what's legally allowed. But just very interesting. Um, I, just, I do I do also want to point out just one thing. I'll just learn it myself on the screen. My costume is not full on legitimate. Okay, Starbucks wasn't invented back then and either were the AirPods. So just in case anybody's going to attack me in the well, comments. Good for thing not being you're not real. using AirPods. You're using... Air sticks. These were these were there back then. I think they're these called are Apple the Connected or something. Connected. <laughs> Maddie. <laughs> Apple plug in or something like that. What I just need to hear your voice. Give it to us, Maddie. What stands out? What what do you think of when you think of what we've seen so far in the World Series? Or what's your opinion on the bat, on the hands? Mm, I'm not gonna voice my opinion on those. Um <laughs> the I think that the biggest thing for me. Um, I watched game two. I was out for Halloween when I was watching it. So I was a little not, I couldn't fully see right far away in the bar TV. Schwarber's home run to make it five, three. Was that actually a foul ball or not? Mm, yes. It was a foul ball. Okay. The fans, the fans were so funny. I mean, they, yeah, that was, that was funny. Yeah. From my position, that looked fair. 
all I could see, they popped up the distance, the score bug changed, everything oh, yeah. changed. They called the home run. I think that Philly uses that as momentum. They took two runs away for no reason. Would have made the game interesting. MLB must be so upset because that would have been, everybody would have been tuning in for the ninth of a 5-3 game. But oh, yeah. I think Philly uses that. They're going to stick two on the board in the first to make up for that nonsense and two nothing to start the game, get back on track. You got to have felt for Schwarber there. What? Oh, yeah. Full lap. Two swing. great swings in that at bat. His next mm-hmm. swing right after yeah. that was six inches from going out of the park. And exactly. I was calling the whole at bat for the elevated fastball. I think if you go back and you want to really want to drag me, you can just be like, <laughs> I was like, elevated fastball gets him 100%. And he's. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Man. How was it? How was being there and watching the games? Did it y'all get awesome. to see each other? Yeah, we saw each other on Friday. It yeah. was busy Friday. Friday's like, Place is a madhouse. Yeah. Everyone's doing everything. Insane. We've we've filmed content. Um I didn't sleep a lot, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. There wasn't you a never lot of, sleep uh, a lot when you're I don't with Jake. sleep a lot when I'm when I'm around those. When you're guys. around Jake. It's Jake. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally Jake. <laughs> uh, I don't know who it is, but whoever it is, we'll find him and we'll stop this <laughs> nonsense one day. Um no, it was really good. Uh game one was late start, like we got to, I got an early flight, got in. It was like just late start of, of the game. We'd been there all day at the office mm-hmm. and then eight o'clock roll around. So I was thinking the energy was going to be low and then five runs. And I'm like, oh, here goes my call. And then bang, here come the field bots. It was, oh, it was yeah. really cool. Well, if you want to bet on the field bots, you can oh, go yeah. to DraftKings Sportsbook. Also, if you want to bet on the NBA, all you NBA fans out there, the wait is over because basketball is back. Tip off your basketball season with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers can make any $5 NBA money line bet and get $200 in free bets if your team wins. Check this out. In addition to the usual bets, everyone can boost their winnings up to 100% with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Go to DraftKings Sportsbook app, opt in and place a stepped up same game parlay today. Because with bigger payouts than ever, DraftKings Sportsbook is where I go to bet on the NBA. I don't know if I said it last week, but Jalen Brunson, my Villanova, (laughs) same class Villanova classmate, has been raking to start the season. So put a little bit of money on Jalen. Say he drops over 20 in his next game. That's what I will be doing. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code JOHNBOY. Make any $5 bet this week and get $200 in free bets if your team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code JOHNBOY. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Well done, Maddie. Lance McCullers, Pete. No, I'm Peter Moylan. Two oh. starts in the postseason so far. Six shutout versus Seattle. Five five innings, three earned runs, four runs total versus the Yankees. So I guess, mm. Maddie, you saw Lance McCullers in, in his last start versus the Yankees. He obviously got hit around a bit, but um, was there anything from that start that uh, that was notable that you think, I mean, or no? This should be my profile picture right here. Yeah. Matty. Great. Lance McCullers can be disgusting. Was he disgusting last time out against Yankees? Mm. No, I mean, I, I think that he was Lance McCullers last time. Nothing insane, but so not like you're saying, he has the potential to be that. I think game three of the 2022 World Series, 22 World Series? Yes, we won 22, right? Yeah, yeah. I think is going to be determined solely on Lance McCullough's curveball. Ooh. You've heard it here first. If he can oh. land that curveball early on, we saw it with Fram the other day. He was bit off early on. It's such a field pitch, but once you get it, I feel like you've got it for, for the game. Mm-hmm. He came out through a couple of terrible ones and then landed one for a strike that was a hanger that reset his release point and I think got him back into the game and then they were all nasty from that point. 
it all depends on how many hangers he throws before he gets to it because they know he's going to throw a ton of them. We'll see. I love that. You could also, you've also seen someone like a Presley who's never thrown a change up all year throw three of them in one at bat to your, mm -hmm. to, it's like there's things that happen in the playoffs that you just, you just like, you can try and predict as much as you want based on numbers. Yeah. But there's but just you stuff just that you know. just can't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Game four, which will be on Tuesday, which will have already been played when this come out. Ranger Suarez is getting um, the start for the Phillies. The Astros have not announced their starter, although I believe Dusty Baker did announce their game four starter. Didn't he? Post game? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. All right. He was asked by whoever. Um, he was asked by whoever the uh, La Pica reporter was. Um, I mean, I feel like we should be able to know who that was. Do we know who that? I don't. Who has been their fourth starter in Christian Javier? It's been Javier or it's been. Um, who's the other? Uh, 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 Urquidy. Urquidy hasn't pitched in the postseason <laughs> yet. It's disgusting too. <laughs> um, okay. So Ranger Suarez in the postseason thus far has pitched wow in four games yeah he has made two starts his last two appearances have been out of the bullpen and his first start um at atlanta he went three and a third one run then he made a start versus the padres and went five innings one ernie two runs total then versus san diego out of the pen two two thirds of an inning no runs no hits and then uh he came out of the bullpen versus houston on the 28th which was that was what was weird when he came out of the bullpen. And I, yeah. And it I was, think that was the talk. People thought he would be starting in game three and they were like, why are you bringing your game three starter out of the bullpen in game two? Well, I think this is, this is the whole planning thing. They don't have the depth that Houston has. So they've yeah. obviously spent the five days game planning, how they cover innings, not just cover innings, but cover innings with a lead. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. When you get behind in these games, as long as you don't get behind in more than three of them, you're going to be okay. Yeah. So when you get behind, that's what makes the decision so hard is when do you go to the, where we just give up mode and save your bullets mode. That's mm -hmm. the, that's, that's the cat and mouse game. Yeah. And if Philly had done that in game one, because they're down five runs, which I was asking them to, then we wouldn't be here right now. So that's what I love about the game of baseball. Yeah. Um, I think the Phillies take two at home. I think this goes back to Houston. I think this could go seven. I would love that if it does. Kind of, I'll be on the plane for game seven, but might be in Fiji. Peter, this is his last episode um, from our beautiful and scary country, the United States of America. I appreciate you guys getting dressed up for my last. Oh, um, uh, yeah. He is, uh, and we're going to discuss this more just because I really want to dive into the Melbourne Aces and just what uh, that league is like over there. Peter, once again, is the manager for your Melbourne Aces. Correct. And he will be making the trek through Fiji to Australia on November 6th, I believe. Correct. Um, so that'll be, um, fun to kind of dive into, but, uh, Peter second year managing the ball club. We're all Melbourne mm, Aces fans. We um, better be. I would love to, and we don't have to do it tonight because my doorbell's about to start ringing in 14 minutes with trick or treaters. Um, I would love to kind of look at if there are any names that we would be familiar with in the league, maybe not with the Aces. I feel like we would have already talked about that, but guys that you might see. There will be a lot of guys that you'll hear this year. We just looked at the, there's going to be some good teams. It's going to be a good competition. We didn't get imports in last year. This is the first year back with imports. Uh, Two-time defending champ, Melbourne Aces, no big deal. Going for a three-peat. Yeah, let's um, go. I don't think I knew you won last year. The year before, but they didn't oh, count okay. last year. Do you like your your roster? Do you have much say in your roster, or is yeah. that kind of done by more? No, it's all committee. It's all done okay. by we don't we don't pull the trigger on anybody until we've all talked. So, um, yeah, I do like the squad a lot. 
I'm so excited, man. Me too. One last thing that we have to promo is Blitzball 2. What? It's yeah. dropping on Warehouse Games. Uh, by the time you're seeing this, uh, Game 1 will be live on the Warehouse Games YouTube channel. Uh, you can watch a trailer here. So yeah, go subscribe to Warehouse Games YouTube channel. That's the last thing that we have to to plug. It's a lot of fun. Peter was in the booth. So if you want to hear more of Peter, go watch that. Um, yeah. It's too much exposure. By the way, swords don't have stickers on them. I'm sorry. Again, not, not legitimate sword. <laughs> I gave it away. Everyone before that moment thought this was a legitimate sword. Sure did. And now we're um, done. Okay, well... This thing moving back to Philly for three games. Um, like I said, my prediction, Phillies take two there. Peter brought it up. It's going to be absolutely freaking insane. Grease the poles. Um, oh, they're going to need to take them down. I love it for Philly. This There's is going to be, it's going to be, the environment will be electric. It's going to be so fun to see that city host some World Series games. You have um, some a decent, well, you Never mind. I'm not going to say it's a decent pitching matchup. I'm not excited about this pitching matchup in particular, but um, Phillies have been rolling, man. It was big for them to steal one in, in Houston. And like Maddie said, if that home run was, was fair for Kyle Schwarber, we might've seen another comeback because the Phillies ride off of momentum. And that would have been quite the momentum boost. All righty guys. Checking out one more little, stat before we go oh a lot of people looking at lance mccullers today lots of people looking at lance mccullers i mean he he I has to right. come in and he's game he's one throwing... in philly you know the environment's going to be insane you have the advantage in that pitchy matchup you have to go do your job you have to take this first game in philly yeah. this he's... is the favorable pitchy matchup he's off speed 50 percent of the time throughout the year that's the key to me Bryce Harper still hitting a casual 392 in the World Series, uh, only two games, small sample size, but he continues to do what he's done the entire postseason. Um, also have been really impressed with Alex Bregman, not only like what he's done on the field, but just like seeing him in such a leadership role on the team, the way that he gathered all of the infielders during batting practice um, before game one, kind of had a moment with them. He's been really cool to kind of see his leadership role grow over there but uh we're in for a good one folks game three game four game five of the world series in philly coming your way Oof. mother nature hold off oh is there weather tonight weather delays i mean it 97 plus percent chance of rain from 8 to 11 so sick okay well you'll know by the time this comes out i like yeah. those <laughs> All righty, guys. Peter has some uh, Halloween stuff to get to. What's your what's never mind? What's your favorite Halloween candy? Mm, it wouldn't be from this country. Oh, sorry. Hi. Um, Three Musketeers, Love maybe. Three Musketeers. I picked out of our candy bowl to save Three Musketeers. Um. Kit Kat. Fave Reds. Ooh, you like Kit Kats. Fave Red Starburst and some M&Ms. Um, the actual Peter, best got... candy is Take Fives. So is that what Halloween is in this country? It's just an excuse for people to buy a ton of candy that they like and give all the shitty stuff away? Because those packets, those mixed packets are always like, oh, I don't really want that, but I want all the rest of it. So you give all the stuff you don't want to the kids. No, I like, I bought good candy this year because it's our first year in this neighborhood. I want to make it known. You We're not rich size? enough to like do, absolutely not. We are not Chipper Jones. Uh, we'd not buy full size candy. I heard Chipper we... was giving around Willy Wonka factories around his place. So go ahead. <laughs> we, um, bought regular human fun size candy, but good candy at that. Um, Peter, you got Aussie lingo before oh. you head to Australia. Yeah, probably. I'll do US. I'll do US lingo when I. Get I want to there. tell you to stop. Okay. Stop.
Go again. Pommy. Say it. Pommy. Um, iced tea. A uh, baby's rattle. Yeah, mm. see, Maddie, I would have thought you would have got this one. A term for an English person. It is often used in an insulting combination, <laughs> especially pommy bastard and pommy. I can't say the second word, but I can say <laughs> pommy bastard. Why yeah, can you say that one and not the other pommy one? Pommy bastard, because the other one's sexual, and I don't want to get sexual on here. Okay, got it. You know, that's why I do get sexual on here all the time, obviously, but I don't want to. You know, our original name was going to be Down Under with Peter and Kelsey, and we changed it to Fun to Fame (laughs) because we thought that people were going to. No, they wouldn't. No (laughs) one would have thought that. We we scratched out that name, although it would have been a great uh, nod to to Peter's Australian heritage. Um, All righty. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Happy Halloween two days later. Happy World Series, baby Philly. It's going to go freaking bananas this week. We love you guys. Mm-hmm. Farm on, farm often. We will see you.